Director of the Department of General Services for the City of Durham. So I want to welcome you to the community visioning for the new Durham Police Department headquarters complex to be designed and built on the former Carpenter Chevrolet property on East Main Street. So before we proceed with the agenda, I want to recognize special guests who are present. If there are any officials, elected officials from state, county, or city offices, I invite you to stand and be recognized. Okay. Being none, they might be here shortly. Who knows? Okay. So thank you all for joining us tonight. I also want to uh, introduce our development team, which includes a design team of O'Brien Atkins Associates and their team. So uh, members of the O'Brien Atkins team, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> and our construction management team is Lynn Lease Americas and members of Lynn Lease team, would you please stand and be recognized? Yeah. Thank you. And the owner team consists of members of the Departments of General Services, uh, Police Department, uh, Emergency 911, and other supporting um, city departments. So city staff, would you please stand to be recognized? Thank you. So our agenda and purpose uh, for this evening's meeting is shown here on the, the slides and includes project overview, program, budget, schedule, site and context, design considerations, and then discussion and, and giving you an opportunity to, to talk. So as the city council was deliberating the purchase of the East Main Street site, we committed to have an open dialogue with the community on the opportunities that may exist for this site as a police headquarters complex and also to discuss implications for development of adjacent properties in the sector. We've heard from neighbors and interested members of the community via email and also in the public media in articles written that this site is one which may offer special opportunities for the sector of downtown and offers not only the opportunity to design and build a new public building on East Main Street, but also a chance for Durham to plan the complex in a way that complements the dynamic growth and, and balanced development of downtown. So this session is intended to be a way for us to have an exchange of information and dialogue, and we believe that this is an appropriate time to be sure that you understand the project purpose and that we obtain and document any ideas, suggestions, and goals that you may wish to share with us. So let's first review some data that could uh, help everyone understand the parameters of the project. First of all, a little bit of history. The Durham Police Department occupied the former Home Security Life Building beginning in 1991. And the police department's occupancy of the 1958 building has been one of adapting to the open plan design for the building and performing numerous renovations over the years, including many repair projects and spending more than $5 million over this period on air conditioning, plumbing, heating, roofing, et cetera. Also, it may not be commonly known that the building accommodates uh, emergency 911 functions on the third floor. The departments have outgrown the building without question and have no plans to keep any functions at this location in the future, perhaps making the way for future owners to deal with opportunities that this property might have to offer. In addition, the police department has leased space outside of the building um, both with headquarters components, functions that would ordinarily be in the building, and then also for the district offices as well. And this leasing activity has increased over the years to a point to where we're leasing about 62,300 square feet of space outside of the headquarters, and then this costs us about $934,000 per year on just leasing. So it was evident along the way that we were running out of space. For the past several years, the police department provided a number of studies, um, both consulting studies as well as internal. And this has been well documented in the space needs that were published in 2010 by CGL Associates. They did an assessment of the operations of the police department as well as all of its facilities 
doing an analysis of the facilities and how well they were being used and so forth. CGL was selected, though, from a nationwide request for qualifications, competition among firms that were specializing in justice and police facilities. So they worked um, diligently within the department, um, spending a lot of time with the various divisions, understanding the purpose and function of the divisions, the amount of space they had, what they needed, what they did not have that they needed, and what the future forecasts were. CGL provided an analysis of the police operations and concluded that the current facilities were undersized, both undersized and not designed for police operations, and they were inordinately inefficient. This analysis and recommendation uh, by CGL were presented in their 2010 report and summarized in the consolidated space program that was provided to us. Functions in the new complex included assembling the following divisions together and planning for facilities for the year 2025. So it's not just to replace, to place what we need in the building, but also to have somewhat of a forecast for future needs. Many of those functions are included in the listing, which includes Office of the Chief, professional standards, personnel and recruiting, community services, criminal investigations, special operations, crime analysis, planning accreditation, training, records, supply, administration, etc., property and evidence, District 5 offices. District 5 currently is on Rigsby Street. It's not in the headquarters. It will be in the new headquarters facility location. Also, bicycle and canine patrols, those are currently at Rigsby. They will be incorporated in the new headquarters complex. Emergency 911 will be a part of it. It was considered um, as a separate building at one time. We believe it's much more efficient to bring that along with the new headquarters complex. And then parking. So as these needs were assembled and they were studied and forecast the areas, Carter Goble recommended purchasing a site of about eight acres along with surface parking on a site that would be centrally located within the city and this was quite a challenging uh, prospect and land search. So General Services Department began looking for sites in 2012 and reviewed numerous options and various locations. So in 2013 though, three locations were identified as the most preferred and began receiving consideration and some amount of due diligence work culminating with the actual purchase of the Main Street property, the Carpenter Chevrolet project property. It was completed in March of this year, and it consists of about four and a half acres. About 4.4 acres are in that site, and then we also were successful in purchasing the little triangle, triangular uh, Wilkerson, triangular parcel, which was a smaller piece, but vital to uh, completing the block of purchase for the uh, new project. So I want to talk for a minute about the goals of the project. Um, the headquarters facility will consolidate many of the critical functions that a headquarters uh, requires into one complex. And in broad terms, when you do the calculations and you total it up, you get about 156,000 square feet of gross building area. The offices, meeting rooms, and District 5 would be about 92,000 square feet. And then the annex, which would include, include property and evidence, forensics, canine, uh, bicycle control, and uh, 911 communications would total about 64,000 square feet in broad terms. Also, we have need for parking, and on the site that we have purchased would need a parking deck and visitor parking. About 535 spaces total, and this will take about 200,000 square feet of area to, to build. So here are some images showing the various types of space that we will have in the facility, and these are, are brought from similar projects. The budget for the project is $62.4 million, and that's an all-inclusive budget, which includes purchase of land, hiring of professional firms, furniture fixtures and equipment, construction management, pre-construction fee, um, actual cost of the work, 
including overhead and profit, and then also some contingency. And that covers the budget part, and there'll be further budget reports as we progress through the design. At this time now, uh, Julie McLaurin will discuss the sequences and schedule for the design and construction of the headquarters complex. Julie. Well, good evening. Our team is, is very excited about this project and um, excited to get your feedback tonight and hearing from um, tonight along with your feedback from the police department and 911 staff it will enable us to start getting going on some design options soon. This project is going to take some time. Over the spring and summer, we will be progressively developing the design, working back and forth with the police department, 911, our construction manager, Lynn Lease, and the city. And by the end of the summer, we will move into construction documentation preparing final detailed drawings and, and uh, specifications. So by this time next year, we will be achieving final approvals uh, and Lynn Lease could be sending out some construction packages for bids. And then we're estimating approximately 16 months um, for construction activities to take place. And then there's final commissioning, furniture installation, um, the coordination of the move-in, all of that's also going to take a few months to, to get coordinated. So next, um, we are going to talk a little bit about the site and context um, of the complex and discuss some design considerations to think about before we move to an open session where we really want to hear from you. I'd like to introduce a few others from our design team. Pat Harris and Jay Smith will speak tonight about site and context. Pat is an architect with the Harris Collaborative and is extremely familiar with the neighborhood of our East Durham site. And Jay Smith is our Director of Landscape Architecture. And lastly, you'll hear from Jeffrey Bottomley, our Senior Design Architect. So I'm going to hand it over to Pat. Thanks, Julie. I haven't been here for very long. I've only been here for about 25 years. So um, I ask you to bear with me a little bit as we go through this. Uh, but uh, I'm very glad to see all of you out here tonight because it shows how much interest there is in this site and this area. And I want to talk a little bit Okay, I'm going to have to sort of do something like this. Can you still hear me okay? All right. All right. I want to talk about Main Street. Main Street is where the site is located. Main Street in Durham travels from Hillsborough Road all the way out to Highway 70 over past Wellens Village. The site is located just a little to the east of downtown and it is in an area that when we were doing the HOPE 6 project, some of you may remember HOPE 6, yes. When we were doing HOPE 6, it, we called it the gateway, the gateway to uh, East Durham and into the HOPE 6 project. This site is located in what was called the gateway area. And it is, uh, you can keep going, it is um, now a part of uh, what we would call the downtown area. The downtown area consists of Brightleaf, the Warehouse District, Central Park, City Central, the Government Services area, and the newest addition to the downtown area, Golden Belt District. So it is both within what would be the Hope Six District and Golden Belt District. And you can just keep going. It's also um, in the midst of um, three of our major historic areas. We have three National Register historic districts close by the site. We have the site here, which encompasses Golden Belt. We have the National Register district up here, which is a part of Cleveland Holloway. 
and we also have the whole downtown National Register Historic District. Now we also have local historic districts, which are, you can see where the, the dotted blue lines are. Those are local historic districts. And while the site is not in a historic district, it has to be, um, it has to recognize that these districts are around it. We recognize that, and we recognize that it's also uh, a part of the gateway between what is mainly uh, considered our downtown area and East Durham. Keep going. The site also sits on major bus lines that connect back all the way down to the Durham um, bus depot and um, rail lines and um, I, I almost said I-47, 147, and also our future rail lines, our future transit area. And to the south of the site, there is actually a plan for um, a, a, a stop on, on the um, rail line. So we have major streets crossing Main Street. We have Roxborough, we have Mangum, and we have Fayetteville. All of these sites, all these streets bring pedestrian and automobile, rail, and bus traffic to the site and past the site. So it's a very, very busy place, or will be a very busy place in the near future. Durham is a city where we talk about live, work, and play. And what this is, is, is not alphabet soup. This is showing you areas of, of living, Oldham Towers here. We have another development, Housing Authority development. We have Cleveland Holloway here. We have part of Golden Belt here. And we have uh, work areas and municipal areas. We have the courthouse area. We have the human services building. We have commercial areas. Those are in yellow. Those are commercial buildings. We have the arts. We have, um, I forgot the name of it, American Tobacco, thank you very much, <laughs> and the ballpark. And we have Golden Belt here. So the site is located um, within a lot of activity in our town. And we look at it in terms of housing. We have senior housing. We have market rate housing. The, that surrounds the, in the in the Belt District, Historic District, and also up in Cleveland Holloway. And we also have subsidized housing. So we have a really good mix of housing around this site. And we have major attractions that are easy, easily accessible. You can walk, you can take the bus, you can drive to almost any uh, of the major areas of downtown from this site. So it's located in a very um, it's, it's a very centrally located site for what we're going to be doing here. In the future, there's future development planned at the south part of the site and also throughout other areas of downtown. So the density is rising and, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about how density um, helps cities like Durham because as it becomes more dense, we have more opportunities for pedestrians and for other means of transportation to be meaningful here. And also with the Human Services Building here, this is a very busy and going to become even busier street and um, the site will be an integral part of it, then police headquarters will be an integral part of this area. And we have more opportunities for live, work, and play as this area develops and as it uh, melds more with East Durham and with downtown Central District. And I'm going to stop now and I'm going to turn over to Jay for a little bit more detailed focus on the site itself. Thank you, Pat. 
My name is Jay Smith, and I'm a landscape architect. So I look through a little bit different lens, but um, needless to say, I'm excited to be part of this design team. So as you might imagine, I look at the site a little bit differently than an architect or an engineer. And as you listen to Pat talking about the, the broader context of this site, we, need, we pay a lot of attention to that. We'll also pay a great deal of attention to sort of our immediate neighbors around our site because we want to be sensitive to that. We want to be a good neighbor. And so we'll draw cues from those objects and those buildings and those spaces around us. So let's talk a little bit about the site specific. So the purple line, which Joel described, is about four and a half acres, sits right about here, a wonderful address on Main Street. And I like the term that Pat used when she said gateway, because you think about gateways when you think about entering uh, into East Durham as we project into this direction, and we have key corners in which we're going to pay a lot of attention to and how we can make the appropriate statement at these gateways into, uh, into uh, Durham and into further into East Durham. We want to pay attention to views. From this high point of the site, we have a wonderful view back to downtown. We'll look for ways to maximize that. We'll also be sensitive about the views that others have and how we won't uh, be, be careful about not impeding those or being um, respectful of that. I really like the last slide that Pat was showing about all the energy which seems to be coming in this direction in East Durham. And so there's lots of opportunities. I think that in time, in addition to our site, we'll continue to populate this area in a respectful and meaningful way. So the site has a crown about here, and it uh, tends to slope off in each direction. We'll, uh, we'll work with the existing grades, uh, trying to not over manipulate the site, but to do it in a cost effective manner. A great deal of the site is hardened. It's a great deal of the site is built now. So we'll need to make room for our uh, program that Joel was describing, which is fairly aggressive. So there's a, there's a great deal of pounds that need to fit into this bag, if you will. And we look forward to, uh, to, to coming up with schemes, as Julie mentioned, in the coming spring and summer that address that. So let's go to the next slide as we think about our neighbors. And of course, the, the, the objects that are there today, Carpenter Chevrolet. Next. Some of the buildings on here. And you might be asking yourself, why is this team telling me about this kind of stuff? Well, it's important to us because we want to bring forward designs which are reflective of, perhaps, or borrow from, or abstract the ideas of the site around us and not just ignore them. Let's go on. We think about materials. Great expressions of things that we identify with Durham. Hope Six, Golden Belt. Yep, next. Across the street, one of the things we'll be keenly interested in is the size and mass of our neighbors and, and, and so forth, and how we will, uh, as Jeffrey brings forward, and you'll hear from him in a moment, uh, designs. I'm not going to show you any designs tonight, don't get me wrong, but uh, how we will think about our massing and being, re being respectful of our neighbors around us. Okay, what's the next slide? Okay, we have the residential units that Pat talked about, and there's a residence on our site. We also, I pointed, I should have mentioned the dialysis center, which sits about here, and some other residential units. We have a, a new emerging brewery right here. Large parking lot as it relates to the social services, um, general ser services building, and of course, Hope Six right here. So I think the next slide is a segue for, um, well, there's the services building and the dialysis center. Thank you. Next. Okay. So now you're going to hear from Jeffrey Bottomley. Jeffrey is a senior design architect with our firm, and he's going to talk to you about some opportunities, and then we're going to assume we want to open the floor to hear from you. Thank you, Jay. Good evening. Um, in an effort to start that conversation that we want to have with you, with these next few slides, we just thought we'd share some of the topics and um, things we've heard from the community to date and, and just, again, try to engage with you in some conversation about what you'd like to see at, at this site with this facility. Next slide. Um, we heard a lot from Jay. I'm sorry. Can we go back? We heard a lot from Jay and Pat about the context, but what we didn't hear is directly from the community. We want to understand your feedback and your thoughts about the context of this site. We want to talk about the architectural expression. Um, there's a lot of history in this area on this site. We also want to talk about the future of Durham and the impact of that on um, things that we should consider. Main Street, uh, how should this building approach Main Street or address Main Street? What are the thoughts that we might have there? Pedestrian experience. Um, we want to look for opportunities to use landscape and open space to enhance the pedestrian experience and make a, a Main Street and other pedestrian corridors vibrant um, and, and enliven them in, in any way that we can. 
Next slide. I want to talk a little bit more detail about the site in the neighborhood and the impact of future retail development and connection corridors that are planned within the community. There are other issues, parking, as we talked about, security. There are significant programmatic elements that we want your feedback on. We want to understand your thoughts about those things and your concerns so that we can address them appropriately. Other issues such as entry and connection um, are things that might want to have more conversation. How do we engage the community? Um, and, and we want to have that conversation again so that we can understand what those things mean to you and what, they can, what we can do to help you um, just, you know, enliven this space and, and be a, a good neighbor. So I'm going to open it up with Joel's help to discussion and consideration on, on, with the community. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, as the city council was deliberating the purchase for this property, we committed to have an open dialogue with the community um, on the opportunities that might exist for this site and also the implications for development of adjacent properties. Um, I'm very pleased to see Mayor Bell came in. Thank you for coming, Mayor. And uh, Don Moffat, I saw Don a second ago, and then also Councilman Eddie Davis, thank you much for coming. Diane, thank you, Diane Katati. Appreciate that. So in the course of events, we've heard from neighbors and, and interested members from various parts of Durham's community, and the public media pointed out this site is one which might offer a lot of those opportunities that, that Jay and Jeffrey mentioned. Pedestrian, open space, gateway, um, collaboration with adjacent properties, and so forth. Now we want to hear from you, though. What do you want to see in connection with this site and the project um, that Durham has as an um, asset to the sector of downtown? Uh, what does a successful project look like to you? In other words, what's your vision? So at this point, I'd like to open it up and for you to give your ideas and thoughts to assist you just raise your hand and we'll bring a mic to you. If you wish to use comment cards, that's fine. We'll collect those as you leave. And also we have post-it notes that you can leave on our boards. So, and we're recording this session, so, and we'll document your comments and so that you can give us uh, any of your ideas in any form that you'd wish. So, um, I'd like to open up, uh, who's first? Raise your hand, please. Gentleman right here. Minimizing negative impacts. The headquarters is to be located at the end of the street where I live. When I went to a previous community forum for possible fatal street plans, a cop snatched the book right out of my hands and would not let me see it. So planning must include embarrassing considerations like proactive, non-productive search. It's an expensive deterrent to pedestrian traffic between East Durham and downtown Durham. You don't belong here, boy, is one of the segregationist cops' favorite sayings here threatening me and others for violating cops' racial and social segregationist profiling rules. So probably one of the main reasons for the site between Holloway and East Main is to keep those people out on the other side of the tracks over there, especially teenagers and young adults, by making it clear that to go downtown you have to walk past a gauntlet of armed paramilitary officers whose job is to keep people in their place, I'm quoting them, in what they themselves call a target area. Quote, our job is not law enforcement, it's social control. A former city councilman said, we don't want all those poor people downtown. And the city spent millions of dollars downtown for gentrified pedestrians and removed bus stops from downtown. And men from both the Chamber of Commerce and Downtown Durham, Inc. said they spent millions to move the bus terminal with all those poor people in the lowest decile of household income away from downtown on the other side of the tracks near the current police headquarters because we only want beautiful people downtown, quote, unquote. All part of the gentrification of downtown and the goal of keeping all those poor people out of downtown Durham. Millions already spent gentrifying Durham, so more millions more spent to keep them out, of East Dur out in East Durham, out of downtown Durham, is likely one of the main reasons for the East Durham site. Segregation is expensive, but you've demonstrated a willingness to pay the costs of gentrification. So how can you make evil intent seem less blatantly evil? 
when you build a fortified castle at the gateway between downtown Durham and East Durham target areas. Get smiley face band-aids to put on the faces of non-gentrified pedestrians slammed down, impacted on their faces in usually undocumented investigative field interrogation, catch and release fishing expedition stop and searches. And when they're pubic, public pubic anal strip searches, you can put your happy face stickers where the sun don't shine. Teenagers are especially at risk of such treatment. You don't want to hear about it? Then don't do it. Thank you, sir. And gentlemen in the back. Hey there, thanks. I think maybe I'm echoing some of the same sentiments, but in slightly different and less um, flowery language. Um, so I don't have that gift. The, um, I think what I'm mostly concerned about is that the um, municipal buildings along Main Street at about five o'clock, um, the staff empty out and go home, um, which creates sort of an, um, an empty sidewalk uh, feel for people who wanna come from the center part of downtown and maybe walk towards Golden Belt and into the neighborhood. So it's just sort of a, um, things tend to go dark. The opportunity there is that, you know, the county does have a lot of parking um, need for those office workers, and that could then serve businesses that do want to um, be open after five and, you know, add some nighttime life. So that, that could be kind of cool if you would um, do that. So it's another way of looking at the county buildings and the city buildings not becoming a, a visual or a practice or in terms of ha habit barrier. And then the other thing, um, I just, I think from an art standpoint um, that we can hopefully do some things that make that um, street front um, encouraging and feel less like an armed barricade. Um, I know the police have a lot of security issues, but I think there is a way to, uh, to make it sort of very civilian and pedestrian friendly for families who are visiting as well as the officers, so. Um, and I'm, some of this is, there is a public art committee that's going, um, that's taking a look at this, so, um, and I see some of the representatives from that project here in the room, too. So, there you go. Thank you, sir. The gentleman in the black hat in the center, center quarter. Good afternoon. I know many of y'all do not know that our new building downtown, it rained in it. That's the county building. It rains in it. I hope whoever's gonna put this building together understand that we taxpayers still got to pay even though it's raining in the building, okay? So one of the problems I've known and I've asked about is too much glass around that building. So somewhere in some place, water is seeking in. But when you tell them to look into it, you get no answer. I'm just like the man spoke with first. Our councils and county commission does not work in the best interest they claim to be working for the people. So I hope you will have many, many opportunities for the citizens to speak out about this building before you start. And one of my last comments, please make sure that Dermites get some of those jobs for that amount of money we are going to invest in that building. I know they're going to tell you they cannot write it into the contract, but the federal government I've talked says it's not. If you negotiate right, it can be written in the contract. But when you do not negotiate it, we will be left out again. Just like the soccer man said, separating one side of the city against another side of the city. Will that be fair? Because the east side will be paying for it while the other side be enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Peterson next. Um, yes, my name is Mrs. Peterson, Victoria Peterson, and I'm, 
I'm one of the activists uh, here in this community. And, and for quite a few years, um, many of us have gone down to the city council and to the county commissioners to talk about the crime. And I've been saying for years that crime is big business. Uh, we're talking about building a $62 million police station. Yes, the police department probably does need a new police station. But I also think what is really needed in this community, I would love to have some more meetings like this to really address the crime problem, particularly what is going on in the African American community. Over the last several years, since about 2000, and the other day I went back and I did some research, we've had over 200 murders in this community since 2000, since 2000 to the present. Now I know you want us to talk about this building. Why can't we use some dollars in this community to stop building courthouses, to stop building police stations, and really deal with the problem. And the problem is, we have a lot of young folk, black, Hispanics, white men, that are caught up in this criminal justice system, cannot get employment, cannot get jobs, and they run rapid, shooting and killing our citizens in this community. So one of the things I would like to ask, and I know time is moving on, the $5 million that we are spending on to purchase for the acres of land, um, was it 4.5 acres? $5 million, I think, is a lot of monies to buy land downtown Durham. Too bad over the last several years, we could not have really developed some good programs to work with these young men and women to get them out of this criminal justice system. So I would like to say, just like my friend back here st stated, who is going to be setting aside to make sure that our Durham residents, our young men in this community, will get jobs in job training? I think it's going to take, what, about, what, two years to build this facility? I think it would be a good job training program. We have the Holton School. Put some construction training programs there to help these young men and women to get jobs. Also, and I do not want to be racist or prejudiced, but I've been out on some of these job sites several years ago that we had in this community. Many of those persons came in from out of town to get work. We've got to make sure, and I want to know, what company will be watching that, will be keeping an eye to make sure that Durham residents will be getting employment and job training. I, I would like to um, get a report, a quarterly report on this project to make sure that our local citizens. Also, I do know a little bit about construction, so I would like to see a camera. Some construction sites now, you can put a camera and the kids and the young folks can watch the building of this project. So I would also like to ask if a camera. But overall, too bad that this community over the years really have not put some programs together to really address the crime that is running rapid, particularly, particularly in the African American community. And I live there, two and three o'clock in the morning, we have guns going off, shootings going off, young black men being shot and killed on the streets. And that's what we need to spend some time on. Instead of keep building courthouses and jails. And thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Who's next? Howdy. I'm going to try to ask a question. Uh, there was kind of some reference to uh, some of the development that's going on in that area, both with the police department and some of the private development going on. Um, and as the current situation in terms of sidewalks and, and crosswalks and things stands, it's kind of a mess. And there's about to be a whole bunch more people walking around that neighborhood. Uh, in addition to the police station and the considerations with that construction, are there any other plans in that area of town to improve uh, pedestrian experiences? 
I'll try to answer that question very briefly, although we want to hear from you, but I would say this. One of the pre-designed aspects that we believe is a requirement is to do a traffic impact analysis in conjunction with the design of this project so that we can look at what the impacts are on traffic, both present and future, and then also to look at pedestrian access, ADA, Americans with Disability Acts, and so forth, so that we are able to respond to those needs specifically as they relate to this project on this site. I think it's safe to say that, that the connection, pedestrian connection between Golden Belt and downtown has probably not materialized to the, to the level that people might have anticipated when that project began. Um, and I, I think that there are, I think there are some very, uh, some various obvious problems with that pedestrian corridor right now, and I just would like to remind everybody that that's going to happen again if we don't do something. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Who's next? Gentleman in the red hat. How you doing? Uh, good evening. Uh, I spoke with Mrs. Uh, Krita prior to coming into this, uh, this room today, and I was trying to get her to give me her card so I could get in contact with her. My, my concern is, is getting my hand on the records of decision that was made regarding that site. Uh, I'm going to lay a foundation of what I'm saying. I'm a former member of the Seattle Club, environmentalist. Uh, we recently had a case, not recently, but back in 89 in North of Virginia, dealing a site that is similar to this, that is lead-based and petroleum-based. I have filled out my comment sheet for requests. I'm concerned about the feasibility study, the env env environmental impact study, and the statement for remediation cleanup at that particular site in question. I know for a fact when I was living in Durham, because my father worked at that car dealership, they planted petroleum in the earth, there was lead placed in that earth, and lead is a carcinogen. It travels, like half gun will travel. You probably will find some of those hot spots, as we call it in the environmental you know, uh, state, way over there on Holloway in Liberty Street. Uh, I noticed the senior citizen building. There's, there are no telling the high levels of toxicity that they have right there at Olden Towers. My question that I'm asking is what were the environmental assessment and statement? What was the preliminary study to determine the need for an environmental impact statement? And what was the record of decision? What was the environmental audit? I want to know these things. Prior to improper disposal of the hazardous waste that was at that site, that is in the ground now, what was the record of decision and the removal action, if any, on that scene? And in my conclusion, I would like to state this. Lead and petroleum is toxic. It is a toxic metal that is present in the air, in the food, in the land, in the, in the soil, and in the water. To go out and build a facility, regardless how much need we, we are in it for the police department, without considering the environmental impact in the future on our men, women, and children. A good example, we found that people who live on these lead-based sites without proper remedial redress. There are families who, ha who happen to be members of the police department. When they carry their clothes home and wash them in their machines, they are transferring those toxic waste and toxic elements over to their family. So I'm asking that we have a clear, pure EPA assessment. None of these little uh, 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 bow jingles, bamboozle cleanup that you have put forth thus far. Now, I am, I am in the process of preparing a Freedom of Information Act, a Public Information Act, requesting certain information regarding this site. And I am prepared to care to the federal court if necessary. I done went this route before. I done won it in North Virginia, J.D. versus the city of Portsmouth in North Virginia and EPA. So I don't mind going that route again. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Jackson, next. Uh, I think that uh, I'd like to say that um, the 
environmental investigations done so far to date um, are public information. They can be requested and they can be provided upon request. So we'll be happy to provide that. So next one, Mr. Jackson. Okay, then next, next one after that, okay. Hi, my name is Susan and I live in the Cleveland Holloway community. Um, and I think that touching upon what you spoke about, a lot of what's been happening has been a community effort. Trosa, Seas Garden, not so much coming from the city or the county with the police station and the justice system and those big massive buildings. You speak about density and vibrance. Density and vibrance, that brings life. We're talking about people, businesses. Part of the reason that Golden Belt hasn't seen the growth is because it takes a long time to have these grassroots efforts. You show Central Park as a business district. 10 years ago, Central Park didn't exist. All those businesses have been open 2009 onwards. Who knows what this area could be? I mean, there's already a, a sidery there. Who knows what these bi this buildings could be if you're not destroying all of them and building a police station. In the next five years, this area could have been the next Central Park. We never know for sure now. I want to ask, now that you're taking this whole area, removing it, and an open space is not a surface parking lot lined with trees. That's not welcoming. Everybody here has already mentioned many times that every time that there's government building built, everybody leaves after 5 p.m. and there's no one on the weekends. It's a dead zone. It's a blight on our city. What are you going to do to add back some affordable commercial space that you are clearly destroying with this project? What are the plans for that? How are you gonna connect what will have been part of the downtown corridor with this project that you're now destroying? Thank you. Thank you, I'm speaking on behalf of the property owners along Ramser Street. I heard a previous valid comment about pedestrian orientation, particularly along East Main Street, which is very important. But uh, the fact is that you also face Ramser Street, and, and Ramser Street is already picking up significant momentum. You have a brewery that is about to open. A gentleman just purchased the building at the corner of Dillard and Ramser and is going to open an arts and entertainment center. And I visualize a lot of those buildings uh, converting over uh, to offices, uh, retail, entertainment. I even visualize some of the tenants that are in the core of downtown that are getting squeezed by higher rents would come to the Ramser Street area. And you may be planning a parking deck fronting Ramser Street. And so I just wanted to put in a plug to encourage pedestrian activity along Ramser Street and not a cold, hard parking deck, but one that might be dressed up. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you for having this session, first of all. It's great to get authentic community involvement. I hope this is the first of many uh, that you're doing. I would love to uh, leapfrog and echo a lot of the comments that are being made. We've got a great opportunity here to have an ugly, if you will, government building, uh, which I trust under O'Brien Atkins would never happen, of course, because they're, they're a solid company. But integration of public art under the city's public art policy, which is a percent for arts policy, is a great opportunity we have here. We can take existing line item budgeted construction costs, such as cement, paint, walls, landscaping, uh, security measures, et cetera, and with small incremental investments, do best practice design, pardon me, <coughs> best practice design and public art. So we hope that you can integrate those. And a lot of the comments are talking about sort of a we versus us. And one of the things that occurs to me is the police is our community. They are people that live among us, and we are them and they are us. But too often it's created as separate. And so we have a chance here to bridge the various people using this building, whether it's the employees themselves, whether it's victims, victims' families, the perpetrators, city officials that are coming and other people having um, various meetings, at-risk youth, and then of course all the community around. And so with intelligent design, starting now in the design process, not just plunking down a statue in the front, 
but connecting and integrating that art from the get-go for small incremental investments, it can make a world of the difference to create what we keep talking in Durham is a progressive, new and vibrant city. So please, uh, I'd like to advocate for considering public art and best practice design. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next. Next, the lady in the back. Go ahead. She'll be after you. I'll go ahead. Um, I just want to speak for urban design. Um, and uh, I guess I have a couple of concerns. One is the uh, any building here needs to be integrated into the urban fabric of this part of the city. Now, unfortunately, over time, the urban fabric of this part of downtown has really been messed up very badly. Uh, and you can see a real great example of it right to your west with that huge parking lot and the government services building, which does not integrate with the, the pedestrian realm in any kind of way. There isn't anything there to attract a pedestrian um, to come into the building unless there happen to be a client. If you're walking by there, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's part of the, the urban wasteland that we have so much of in, in Durham. Uh, as you walk along our sidewalks. So you, you have some interesting buildings, you have some nice shops, and then you'll have uh, a block of blank wall, a block of surface parking, a block of uh, parking garage that it does not relate to the urban fabric. You have a wonderful opportunity to recreate the urban fabric in this area here. I would strongly encourage you to consider um, ground floor uses that have nothing to do with the police department and would contain retail uses. Um, this could make money for the city. I know there are some uh, of our political uh, leaders who have a lot of concerns about laws that make this kind of thing difficult. I think that just calls for some creativity and some innovative thinking on the part of our leaders. Uh, I think that's what's called leadership. Um, I believe that um, particularly along Ramser and Main Street, there needs to be ground floor non-office, commercial type uses, retail uses, restaurant uses, uses that will bring people to that area after five o'clock and during the day. Um, I also would like to suggest that the design of the building itself look as, less, as little like a fortress as possible. I think it should look like any other office building in the city except, well, and with ground floor retail. Um, I understand uh, you know, I guess the whole question that, that my whole thing with security is, you know, I, I hear people talk about that, you know, they have to have the build security is a concern. Who are you trying to secure yourself from? Would that be the city, the people of the city of Durham? Those are the clients for this building. Those are the people who you're building the building for. You're not building it for the police. You're building it for the people of the city of Durham. So it should be something that they're proud of, that they're not afraid of. It should be something that's not there to scare them away. So again, I would encourage you to look at designs that make it look like any other office building or a hotel or whatever that would be built downtown. I think that the police can do a lot to address their security concerns by perhaps looking at the way that they interact with the people in the community now. If they can improve that, if they can stop some of the practices that, that they say they're not doing but everybody else in the community seems to feel that they are, and I think feelings in this kind of thing have as much validity as whatever the police chief says in the, in the statement about, um, about all the, you know, the, the kind of activities that the people are concerned about, profiling and, and those kinds of things. Not saying that it happens, but there certainly is a perception. And if you can deal with those perceptions, then you, know, you don't need to make the place a fortress. It can be just another building downtown. So I would really just like to encourage you to integrate this into a future urban fabric that is developing very nicely on the, the western side of downtown. It's not happening here. Um, again, it's very disappointing that the, the county couldn't have done that with their buildings and with their surface parking. Um, if there's any way that we can uh, not have surface parking or structured parking at the edges of the property so that they're right out there in the public realm but can be maybe more internal to the building. I think that would be uh, very advantageous. Don't build a building that turns it back on its people. Please build a building 
and develop this site in a way that welcomes the people of Durham into this area, encourages them to come down. If you want to make this, if this is a gateway, make it a gateway. Don't put a block at the gateway. Put something welcoming that will encourage people to come in and, uh, and again, is integrated with the urban fabric and makes it a nice place for pedestrians. Um, the pedestrian realm would be much more improved, uh, in my opinion, by a well-designed building that held the street wall as opposed to a building that is, is, has a setback that uh, allows for security, additional security along in between the building setback and the street. Uh, it's nice to have little patches of open space, but in this set, you know, there, there are other opportunities for open space here. This won't be a park. Uh, it's going to be a building. I think that train has left the station a long time ago. Uh, the, whether or not this is more money than we should be paying for this kind of a project, that train has left the station a long time ago. This is going to happen. So let's work together and try and build a building that all the people in Durham can be proud of, that when you walk by in the future, you'll feel comfortable walking by, not just because I'm safe, the police are here, but because there's an interesting shop window that I can look at as I pass. There's activity in the building after 5 o'clock. There's something that relates to me as a pedestrian who may not have any business because fortunately I don't have a lot of business with the police department and quite frankly I'd like to keep it that way. But, but still, they're an important part of the community and I realize that. And they, if, if they're going to occupy uh, a piece of land on a street like Main Street and a street like Ramser, they need to respect that, what those streets are really about. And they're about, in part, is moving pedestrians through and, and give us something that, that we want to uh, interact with and not just another uh, wall with a couple of statues and some plants. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for those comments in the back. Next person. I really want to reiterate uh, the beginning remarks of that gentleman. When this building is opened, I hope we can stand there and say this is truly great urban design. And so I do hope, I have great confidence in Pat there, and uh, again, just make sure that it's a great urban designed building that is welcoming and not a bunker. I understand the security needs that the police have. They are a part of our community. I totally agree with the gentleman who made the remark that we are them and they are us. But let's not have a bunker on Main Street. Thank you. Thank you. Next, over here. Hi, I wanted to thank Pat for the context analysis um, that I thought was really quite good and identified so many of the different things that are happening in and around this site. The one thing that I felt was missing from it was any redeeming qualities being pointed out in any of the existing buildings that are on the site. Um, in particular, the one that's painted white with blue trim on it right now. If you look at Preservation Durham's website, and I will admit I'm the executive director, I didn't want to lead with that and have you <laughs> assume what I was going to say. Um, we posted just today um, a picture of that building taken in 1923 along with a, build, a picture of what it looks like now. And you can see the changes that have been made to it. It's been painted. It has a new storefront on the ground floor. The windows are smaller. But what really struck me about it is how much it looks like the buildings in Golden Belt and it looks like American tobacco. And if you're talking about linking things and you're talking about being contextual um, and you're talking about an architectural expression that kind of connects all of these things, I think that's a great place to start and that keeping that building is actually a really great opportunity to address so many of the things that people have brought up tonight. Things like multi-use on this side or having offices or retail, having some kind of human scale and walkability. So I'd encourage everybody to look at that picture. It looks much more redeeming in that 1923 photo than it does today. It's actually quite charming. Um, and how that could possibly be incorporated as a corner of this site um, to kind of show it off and, and tie it to the history of the site and the other pieces of downtown. Thank you. Who's next? up here in the front. Uh, 
Um, I would just echo some of the things that uh, Wendy said. Um, I've heard a lot of concern about jobs, um, how this project is going to address the street, how it's going to respond to the context of a part of East Main Street that has um, really suffered over the years from um, a cycle of tear down and, and uh, construction of acres and acres of surface parking. There really is very little context left um, to respond to, unfortunately. And I think one of the, the ways in Durham that we have um, successfully navigated our way out of a, a very bad economic situation over the past decade and a half is through historic preservation. Um, it's been a very powerful economic development tool. Um, you don't have to look very far to find all kinds of examples of buildings that are in far worse shape than uh, the 1923 uh, Carpenter Building and the 1948 uh, GMC Building on this site. Um, these are at least as interesting and in at least as good a condition as many of the most beautiful places in Durham Central Park and downtown Durham. Um, I would hope for this project that we would study and try to find a way to incorporate those buildings, in particular um, the 1923 building, which really could, it could, when combined with modern adjacent construction, could really be a very special police headquarters facility that would be uniquely a Durham project and a great public building. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Who's next? I just I had two other things I wanted to comment about uh, in this regard process. One is I want to thank you and particularly General Services for having this meeting tonight. I think this is very helpful. Um, I hope it's helpful for you. It's certainly been helpful for me to get up and make my comments, and I'm sure these other folks have been as well. And it's nice to be heard. Um, and as the other gentleman mentioned, I hope this is, is not the last. I hope it's a, a first. And um, then the other part, the other thing I would, and, and, and that you have these during the process, you know, when you, when you're through your visioning and you've got something to show us, come back and show us and let us comment on that. Um, the second thing I wanted to say was uh, Durham is fortunate to have a lot of very good uh, human resources in the design area. And um, I'm actually a member of a group called the Durham Area Designers, which is architects and planners and whatever in the area. Uh, I would like to encourage the team to work with some of these local folks and see if, you know, maybe bounce some ideas off of them and use all the local resources that you can to make the project as, as good as possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lady in the back, back there. I just want to echo some of the things that both Rob and Wendy said too, that um, I've been here in Durham as many, many of you have long enough to remember what it was they tore down to build the current police department headquarters. And we would weep to see photos, and I wish I had some, of those buildings, because they would have integrated perfectly in that whole corridor that extends to Duke and downtown. Um, if we go into this believing that we cannot look at incorporating what is under that 1928 building, um, and utilize it in this construction, then we won't do it. We have to go in with the notion that we will do it, that we will figure out a way to do it because there is a way to do it. There's always a way to do it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it is at a higher cost either. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Who else? I have two, just two quick questions. I was hoping that you were going to be able to answer some of the questions that have come forth, particularly the gentleman that asked about the environment study. Uh, I would also would like to know, because if there's a lot of lead-based paint and some dangerous stuff under that ground, I would like to know. So can you please tell us this evening, I, I heard you said that there has been a study done but you didn't tell us, uh, is the ground okay, or is there the person here, because I'm sure you didn't do the study, and I'm not trying to be rude, is the person here that, that handled that, that took care of that, can they speak on that? And um, 
I would also like someone to speak on about the plans for how are you going to go about to make sure that Durham residents will be able to get employment? What's been put in place to make sure? I know a project, and if I was to mention, yes, I will mention it, uh, the American Tobacco Project. A lot of us was very involved with that project. When that project was going on, I went to them because I worked with ex-offenders heavily at that time, and I went to them, and they told me, well, Mrs. Peterson, we don't have to hire these folks because there was nothing in writing to make sure that Durham residents got employment. And they were right. When I went back and checked, there wasn't anything in writing. So I would like to make sure, and I want to I wanna hear something tonight. I want to hear some commitments here to, to make sure that our local people are going to our, 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 our brick masonry, our um, folks who lay the sheetrock, uh, you have to contract and you have to subcontract a lot of that work out. And I, I want to hear some, I want to hear some talk. I see a lot of folks up here in suits. I don't know why they're here. I, I want to hear something from them this evening before we leave out of here tonight. Because that's what this is really all about. Not to just to make comments, but to hear some statements from you folks. So there's two issues right there that I would like to get some comments. Let me try that briefly. From this evening. Um, just to inform you, and since I don't have a copy of the full environmental report investigation with me, I'm going to speak from memory on it. Um, it is my recollection on that, and we will make it available. Uh, upon request, but I, it's not my recollection that we have any lead in the ground. There may be some lead paint incident around some of the windows and some of the uh, sealant or caulking around that, but none in the ground that I'm aware of. In the ground, the environmental effects that we've seen so far are former locations of tanks which have been removed, and then there is a current automotive operation on site and we have uh, done additional investigation on that, and that's included in the supplementary report, which was provided that we contracted. Ms. Creta, though, she's our project manager. We'll give you her contact information. Anyone who has additional questions about documents that are public record will be more than happy to provide that, and, and since it was submitted to us and contracted by us, that is a, a public record. With regard to the employment question, all I can say is that we are not at that point yet to be able to construct, do a construct on the percentages of participation. However, we have asked for the EOEA department, Ms. Deborah Giles, director, to provide her recommendations on this. One of the reasons why we chose the construction manager uh, approach to delivery of the construction is so that we can engage the construction management firm early on to work with the design and so that we will have influence over the contract methods and means on the, on the construction. On the construction management team, we have Mr. Uh, Jesse Callis who's here. He's part of that team and one of the things that will be provided is a very robust participation plan on the project and a way in which to provide the local jobs in Durham that I'm hearing that you're interested in. So that's about as far as I can go tonight, but We'll provide more information to you as we go along through. Are there any other questions from the audience anywhere? The gentleman who spoke first wants to speak again. Could you just limit it to a couple of minutes, yeah, sir? Um, one small public safety security item. One of the reasons why the existing building is scary is because uh, a few years ago, some guy being interrogated wound up going over the rail at like 38 feet above the cement. I was there moments after he was hauled away. He survived. But uh, I would ask for no balconies for people to uh, hit the pavement from. No balconies. However, that happened. Anyone else? Yeah. Gentleman Red Hat, please, just two minutes. I can do this in a minute. Since you mentioned storage tanks, and uh, the slush fund ran out in 1986 expired in 2005. What did you use for the required cleanup of the leaks from those petroleum underground storage tanks since you are from, that was left there by the sovereign owners? What fund did you 
Sir, I don't have that information, but um, we'll note that. And it's probably included in the environmental investigation that was completed. Thank you. Anyone else? Gentleman in the back, center row. Good evening. Thanks for uh, hosting this tonight. Right. My name is Matt Gladick, and I'm with Downtown Durham, Inc. Um, I just wanted to, again, reiterate what some of the people here have said. This is a corridor that we have marked since 2000, I believe, in our master plan then, and again in the 2008. And again, it's been coming up in our um, update to the master plan, which we're working on right now, the importance of this corridor to connect Golden Belt and East Durham. So I would hope that uh, we can have future meetings on this to talk about the design of how we could better tie in that frontage of the building, both on Main, Main Street and, as Marcus Jackson said, on Ramser Street to help encourage the street, uh, the street activity and that pedestrian life. And again, as our Ponysaurus Brewer here has mentioned, the importance of a better street amenities there for tying in pedestrian activity in this area. There's a lot of great vitality here and we hope to encourage that and we hope that this police station can be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you. So if there's no one else, I wanna mention one thing. Uh, a lady in the back before I close. Hi, my name is Leslie Frost, and I came tonight just to express my support for the preservation of the historic buildings there. And having just followed uh, Mr. Gladick, I would also like to encourage the city to think about the really, really important function this can have in linking um, East Durham with the downtown area. I think that's crucial, and so thank you. Thank you very much. So we, we are uh, intending to keep the comment period open through May the 1st. You have a comment cards that are, if you've not received one, if you wish to make an additional comment or thoughts that you have, you're wel we're welcome uh, to do that. You can send those comment cards in. Um, the contact information uh, is available here. Uh, Trish Creta in General Services is our project manager for the project. Uh, you can send any information into her either, either via 2011 Main Street, via mail or email or telephone. And so, um, and a recording of the meeting, of course, will be available on the project website that we are designing. And on the city's YouTube channel, updates will be provided via these communication vehicles throughout the course of the project and also will be available on the project website. So what I'd like to say is that um, we plan to organize the input that we've received tonight. We're gonna document that and we're going to begin the design phase shortly. Giving to consideration the comments that have been received this evening and any uh, other additional comments that might come in. We have also assembled all of the articles written uh, and published in the newspapers and in the uh, online media and we're printing those to make sure that's part of the uh, public comment pre-design period. So and thank you all for attending this evening and for your participation, your input and your ideas and um, what we will do in the future as the design progresses is that we will announce ahead of time the uh, presentations that will be made to city council. We have committed to city council that they will receive uh, progress reports. In addition to that, we have established a project steering committee. The project steering committee will be meeting monthly. They'll be receiving progress reports on the project and those meetings will be uh, allowing us to give feedback to the design team as we progress through the various phases. So uh, there will be additional opportunity to see the design as it progresses. It's not our intention to complete the design, start construction, and, so, and then show you a rendering. That's not the way we intend to do this. So thank you again for your participation, and thanks so much to the design and construction team for collaborating to make this meeting possible tonight. Thank you, good night.